Not a hypocrite sets out to judge others. He puts himself on very, very thin ice. He faces the judgment of God Himself. And verses 7 through 16, the description of the judgment on the hypocrite is displayed. Now a hypocrite's behavior, his character, his works, his personal worth is what God's evaluation and judgment is based on. In verses 7 through 10, we see that the hypocrite is judged according to his works. The hypocrite is judged according to his works. Now you must listen carefully here, please. If you put your hearing aid in now, put it in now. Hear me closely. It might seem from these verses that salvation is by works. That eternal life can be attained by patiently doing good. The whole of Scripture does not teach salvation by works. So we must understand this on the basis of that. So here Paul is not discussing how a person is saved and receives eternal life. He is showing that Jew and Gentile alike are all the same playing field before God in the matter of sin. When judging someone according to their works, God first weighs the reasons for an individual's behavior. Notice verses 7 and 8 here. Eternal life to those who by patiently doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality, but wrath and indignation to those who are self-seeking and disobey the truth, but are obeying unrighteousness. So here God uh, judges or weighs the individual's behavior. Those that truly are born again, those that are truly saved and have trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they're going to seek glory, honor, and immortality. That's what they're going to seek. That's what a Christian does. But a lost person is self-seeking. They're constantly looking after themselves. Do you see the opposite here? God will weigh the reasons for an individual's behavior. Then God weighs the results of an individual's behavior. Notice verses 9 and 10. Affliction and distress for every human being who does evil, first to the Jew and also to the Gentile, but glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good, first to the Jew and also to the Gentile. Now that expression, first to the Jew and also to the Gentile, brings to life that the more information or understanding one has access to, the more responsibility they bear. And of course the Jews had the law, the Gentiles did not have the law, and so they're bearing more responsibility. And Paul is pointing that out clearly here. The hypocrite's portion will be worse than the heathen, for the simple fact of the matter is, the opportunities were much greater. A hypocrite has to know something. They know something of God's Word, but they pervert God's Word. Inside, they're not really living by it. They're setting up a play. They're play acting. And they will be held accountable for that. Verses 11 through 16 attest to the fact that the hypocrite will be judged according to his worth. Now here, let us see plainly how discriminating the judgment of God is. God will weigh an individual's advantages. Look at verses 11 and 12. There is no favoritism with God. All those who sin without the law will also perish without the law. And all of those who sin under the law will be judged by the law. Now Paul is pointing out here that those who have the law have much more life than those without it. They have information. What are they doing with that information? Having a Bible will greatly increase our ability to know God's will for our lives. But, but, but doom awaits everyone who rejects the light. It doesn't matter how small that light is in your life. If you're in a forest, in a dark forest, and you see this little bit of light on the edge of that forest, and you really want to get out of that dangerous forest, you will go toward that light. So it doesn't matter how dim that light is, you are responsible. We know from chapter 1 of Romans that there, everyone is responsible. No one is without excuse. Because you cannot walk out into creation, out into nature, and not see that there's a God. And if you see that there's a God and you find no way to glorify Him and honor Him, you do not seek to find the way to God, the way to a right relationship with Him. And that's on you. You will be held responsible no matter how light or little that light is. But for those 
who have the greater advantage, who have more light, who have the Word of God, there is less excuse and consequently greater guilt. And we know that as preachers and teachers, we are held to a higher standard. There will be more guilt on myself if I don't teach you God's Word. If I bring God's Word down and I don't teach it correctly, I will be held accountable for that. So there is accountability and greater accountability for those who have more light. God will also weigh an individual's attitude, verses 13 through 15. For the hearers of the law are not righteous before God, but the doers of the law will be declared righteous. Now, where have we heard that before? The book of James. What does James say? It's not those that hear God's Word. It's those that act on God's Word. So, when Gentiles who do not have the law instinctively do what the law demands, they are a law to themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the word of the law is written on their hearts. Their consciences testify in support of this. And their competing thoughts either accuse or excuse them. The Gentile's law was not in code, but in conscience. They didn't have the basic moral concepts which do underlie the law of Moses. For God's general laws have been handed down from of old. But these laws are written into the innate consciousness of the soul, and to them the conscious bears witness. Now for an individual to make the statement, just let your conscious be the guy, be very careful. You can be gravely mistaken. A conscious can be seared. Think about Herod and John the Baptist, what went on there. At first, Herod was excited to hear the words of John the Baptist. He listened. He couldn't wait to hear more. The next thing you see, John the Baptist is in prison. Herod is put him in prison. And the next thing you see, Herod has had John the Baptist be in it. A conscious can be seared. So be careful thinking, I can just follow my conscience. Or today, many say, just follow your heart. That is a fool's thinking. It's possible for our conscience, our heart, to be seared and deceive us. Conscious must be educated and monitored by the Word of God. Apart from God's Word, conscious is a very uncertain faculty of the soul. But, conscious is the middle faculty by which one judges his own actions and passes sentence on his own actions. Conscious bears witness that mankind lives in a moral universe that is ultimately answerable to God. Those that have God's Word to guide their very consciences are more responsible than those who do not have this guy of God's Word, but they still try to honor God by doing what's right. Now, if you catch that here, that's what Paul's saying here. The Gentiles became a law to themselves because they didn't have the law, but they were trying to do what's right. They were trying to show love. They were trying to be patient. They were trying to be kind. They were trying to do all the things that they were supposed to do, the right things before God. And so they had set a law even of themselves. 